Hi folks, it's Homer White back again, part two of our R Markdown series. We're going to talk now about a little bit more about code chunks, uh, the options for them, and how to produce them. So considering the R Markdown document with which we began, um, let's consider um, a new section called a plot. The text is, here's an interesting plot and it introduces a code chunk and you don't have to understand any of the R code in it if you haven't uh, done any graphing yet or anything with tidyverse but it's going to produce a an interesting plot when uh, the document is knit so um, let's go ahead and take a look at that knit up the document And instead of popping it up big in the viewer, let's just go ahead and look at the bottom. So you see that underneath the uh, code chunk, we see that a graph has been produced. I'll pop it up big now. We'll take a closer look. It turns out to be a graph of the popularity of two names for girls, Mary and Maria, over the years. X-axis is uh, what year it was, and the Y-axis is how many out of 10,000 female babies born in that year had that name. And so you can see that the name Mary, which was once immensely common for girls, has become, after the year 2000, even less uh, common than the name Maria. So um, just want to say a couple of things about uh, this code chunk. It is produced uh, with uh, a data set called Baby Names that does not come accessible to you when you just start an R session. You need a package called Baby Names that has this data set inside of it. And uh, these uh, continuation markers here come from something uh, that comes with a package called Tidyverse, uh, as does this uh, function filter and uh, also this function ggplot and following functions. So uh, this code chunk is actually not going to run uh, when you uh, knit up the document unless you get the document ready for it. So check up uh, at the beginning code chunk, the one that is called uh, setup here. <clears throat> You'll notice that I have attached two packages, tidyverse and baby names, that contain the functions and data sets needed to uh, run the code at the bottom without error. You need to keep carefully in mind that when an R markdown document knits, it starts from its own private R session, and it starts just like any R session starts with no extra packages loaded and um, with an empty global environment. So you have to teach the R Markdown document everything that you want it to do. Uh, another thing you'll notice uh, is that after the uh, name of the document, which is uh, after the name of the code chunk, which is just set up, uh, there's a little comma and then you see what we call what we call chunk options. There are a great many chunk options for our code chunks, and I'm just going to stop for a minute and put the cat outside the room. Okay, cat has been evicted. There are a great many code chunks available for. Uh, there, there are a great many chunk options available for uh, code chunks in an R Markdown document. Um, the include equals false is just saying that the code inside this uh, code chunk should be run when the document is knit, but there should be no evidence of it having been run in the sense of uh, any messages that would be printed ordinarily out to the console are not gonna show up in the output of the knitted document. Um, You'll see that in this setup chunk, there's actually a, a call to a function called ops chunk dollar sign set uh, that comes from the knitter package. And uh, what this does is it sets some uh, chunk options for all subsequent code chunks. 
uh, error equals true means that even if the R code inside a chunk has an error, then the document will still knit, but it'll print out the error message underneath the code chunk. Fig.align is center is what made the graph show up centered over here uh, within the available width. Out.width is 90%. You could set any percent you want, and the smaller you set the percentage, the smaller the graph will be. Warning equal false, message equal false. If any of your R code uh, would produce warnings or messages to the console, they will not show up in the output when the document is knitted. Size is small, just makes any math you make a little bit smaller than regular text. Tidy equals false means that the way you type in the R code is the way it's going to show up when the document is knitted. Uh, R Markdown will not attempt to tidy it up, tidy up for you. There are many other chunk options. These are just recommended ones for uh, documents like your homework document. So you can just leave this setup chunk alone, except for uh, the uh, packages you might want to attach that you're going to need later on. Here's another interesting uh, chunk option. Sometimes you want to show a result to the uh, user with to, to the reader without having the R code be seen. So you could say echo equals false to do that. Let's knit this up again. And now you see that the graph was produced, but the code that uh, produced it is not echoed out into the um, knitted document. There is another chunk option that sometimes people use, eval equal false. So you might do this if you just want to show some code, but you don't need it to run. So when we knit this up, let's see what happens. Yes, the code is shown in the document, but there is no graph because um, when the document knit, the code was not run. So that's a few chunk options you can look at. There are a great many more. If you were to Google something like um, um, knitter chunk options, then probably your first hit, yes it is, is the little book written by Iwi Jie, the uh, developer of R Markdown and Knitter, a uh, whole article on the many different co-chunk options that there are. Let me uh, say one more thing about co-chunks. Uh, suppose you wanted to make a new one, uh, a new bit of code I write here in text. Do you have to laboriously type those back ticks and then the R brace, you know, and then, you know, the more back ticks before you start entering code? You do not. You can go to insert here where I'm waving my mouse and ask to insert R and a new code chunk appears for you. Isn't that nice? And then you can type in whatever code uh, you want to uh, have. So how about cat hello? Um, here is another interesting thing. You don't have to wait to knit in order to find out what your code will do. You can just plain run it. So uh, you can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, with the cursor flashing at a line, you can do command enter and um, the code will run. Um, and you see the output underneath in the R Markdown document, but uh, you could and you could clear that output if you wish. A, a shortcut might be to go to the arrow at the upper right hand corner of the chunk. When you hover, it says run current chunk, and uh, you get the same effect. Just be careful. Remember that. The R Markdown document is its own separate being when it knits. When you're running code chunks in an R Markdown document in this way, you're relying on the current state of your R session 
and what's in your global environment. The only thing in my global environment is something called my funk. And I don't believe that I have necessarily uh, loaded um, the tidyverse or baby names yet. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and guarantee that I haven't by restarting R here. And then watch what happens when I try to uh, run this code chunk. Oh, hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, gee, uh, the R Markdown document is actually incredibly smart. R Studio is incredibly smart, and I forgot about this. Uh, it detected that the active document was this R Markdown document that had these two library commands in it. So when it restarted the R session, it uh, did. Uh, it actually uh, libraried those two uh, packages. That's really smart. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to uh, restart my R. And then I'm going to open this package again to show you the error that can occur. Um, alrighty. Now let's say that I were to rerun that pack, rerun that chunk. Error. And uh, we couldn't find this little uh, pipe function here. And that's because the tidyverse package uh, has not been attached to my R session. So if you're going to be experimenting with your code as you go along, then you need to make sure that in your R session, you attach the packages you need. And you need to make sure that if you want to, you know, if you want to run a function like Minicat, you're going to get an error unless you run the definition of minicat, then you can do minicat. See? So uh, just keep in mind that difference between your global environment and your R session versus the, the way an R Markdown document knits, which is to, to start up its own special new R session with an empty global environment and no extra packages loaded. And then you'll be able to keep track of things better. That's it for now. More later.